فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters as you're all aware of um, Christmas is close and it's around the corner uh, and the non-believers are going to be celebrating it but the sad thing is that you find a lot of Muslims who are actually celebrating it with them so inshallah ta'ala uh, in this uh, lecture I hope to be idhnillah al kareem talk about this issue which is imitating the kuffar and following and copying them what does our religion say about that and what position has it taken regarding regarding that the first point that i want to mention inshallah ta'ala is khuturatu tashabbuh bil kuffar the dangers and the severity of uh, imitating the kuffar and how serious it is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and this hadith is collected um, by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, on the authority of Abdullah uh, ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, um, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bu'ithtu bayna yaday sa'ati bisayfi, حتى يعبد الله تعالى وحده لا شريك له وجعل رزقي تحت ظل رمحي وجعل الذلة والصغار على من خالف أمري ومن تشبه بقوم فهو منهم What concerns us from this hadith is the last part in which the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said وجعل الذلة والصغار على من خالف أمري Humility and belittling is for the one who opposes my command. وَمَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ And anyone who imitates a group of people, فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ He is from those people who he, he is from those people in which he has imitated. So you can see the severity of uh, imitating the disbelievers. Because if you do imitate them, you are verily from them and you are one of them. And if you look at the hadith, you realize that the Prophet ﷺ has said it in the context where he speaks about humility and belittling. Because the one who goes against um, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he has taken the path of the shayateen al-insi wal-jinn, the devils, uh, the disbelievers, and he has taken their path. And this is a matter that has become very prominent and common amongst the Muslims today, imitating the disbelievers in the way we dress, in the way we act and talk, and in the way we do things. And the prophets of Allah were the furthest from imitating the disbelievers. They stayed away from it. And they knew that this issue connected to a very fundamental principle of our religion, which is known as al-wala wal-bara which is loving Allah and His Messenger and loving every single person Allah and His Messenger love and hating every single person who Allah and His Messenger hate. But if you look at Nabi Allah Nuh for instance, look what he said, alayhi salam, alayhim naba'a Nuhin, Allah says, read on to them, O Muhammad, the story of Nabi Allah Nuh, إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ when Nabi Allah Nuh said to his people, O oh my people, in kana kabura alaykum maqami wa tadkiri bi ayatillah, if my positioning and me reminding you of Allah has become something big to you, and that you want to physically harm me, and that you want to cause me pain, fa'ala Allahi tawakkaltu, I rely on Allah, fa'ajmi'u amrakum wa shuraka'akum, bring together yourselves and your, 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 all of you come together if you want. Reunite upon me if you wish so. 
ثم لا يكون أمركم عليكم غمة ثم قضوا إلي ولا تنظرون and bring your efforts and your hard work together and try to bring me to an end and do not delay and wait for me so you look at the prophets of Allah their position was clear they've made their stance clear they were ones who knew that they stood against this concept of imitating the kuffar and being of them لذلك also Allah says in another ayah قال إني أشهد الله I testify to Allah وَشْهَدُوا and you also testify أَنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ that I am free from whatever you associate partners with Allah with I'm free from it I have nothing to do with it مِن دُونِهِ فَكِيدُونِ جَمِيعًا and also plot against me all if you wish ثُمَّ لَا تُنْظِرُونَ and do not wait for me إِنِّي تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ I rely on Allah رَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ my Lord and your Lord مَا مِن دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاصِيَتِهَا There is no beast on the face of this earth except that it's in the control of Allah. Allah is the one who runs his affairs. إِنَّ رَبِّ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ My Lord is the one whose path is straight. Nabi Allah Ibrahim, he says, as Allah tells us in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ When Ibrahim said to his father and his people, إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِّمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ I am free from that which you worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Nabiullah Musa and Harun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to both of them, فَاسْتَقِيمَا Both of you be steadfast. وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِّ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And do not follow the path of those who do not know. Don't follow the path of the criminals. Do not follow the path of the disbelievers. Do not follow the path of the innovators. فَاسْتَقِيمَا Be steadfast. So steadfast is to, tell, is to go against the path of the disbelievers and to not be upon their path is what steadfast is. So these verses and these evidences tell us and bring to our minds the severity and the danger of imitating the kuffar and trying to be one of them. And that is losing the true concept of al-wala'i wal-bara which is the highest branch of Iman, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أوثق عرى الإيمان الحب في الله والبغض في الله The highest branch of Al-Iman is to love for the sake of Allah, and it is to hate for the sake of Allah. And also the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ثلاث من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان Three things. Anybody who has these three things, then that individual has received has gained the sweetness of Iman. مَنْ كَانَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ وَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا Anyone who Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to him than anything else. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And the second one is the person who loves a slave and he does not love him except for the sake of Allah. And the third one is the one who dislikes أَنْ يَعُودَ إِلَى الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْضَفَ فِي النَّارِ and the one who hates to go to disbelief and does not like it, uh, just like he does not like to be thrown into the fire. So anyone who receives those three has tasted the sweetness of Al-Iman. And from them is that that person loves Allah and his messenger more than anything on the face of this earth. And also they don't only just love Allah and his messenger. The second one was what? They love a slave and they don't love them except for the sake of Allah. al hubbu fillah. This issue of love and hate, you can see it is connected to the highest branch of Iman and it's also connected to, based on the second hadith, it's connected to the sweetness of Iman, you gaining it. And it's also the path of the messengers and the prophets. In other words, they made their path clear. Nabi Allah Nuh says to his people, I am free from you. I have nothing to do with you. Nabi Allah Musa and Harun, the same. Nabi Allah Ibrahim, says to his father who gave birth to him and his, home, his, his community and the people he's from, I am free from what you worship. So Christmas is a worship, it's a ibadah for these people. And a believer frees himself from this. He has nothing to do with it. He does not even give them greetings regarding it and does not say to them, Merry Christmas, because this is not something you believe. You clearly say to them, إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِّمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ I am free from that which you worship. That's your religion. It's not my religion. 
And my beloved brothers and sisters, our scholars, they didn't take it very lightly when it came to the issue of imitating the kuffar. They took their time out to author books. So for example, if you look at Shaykh al-Islam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullahi, may Allah have mercy upon him, he authored this book of his Iqtida'u Salat al-Mustaqeem li mukhalafati ashab al-Jahim where he talks about the issue and the concept of imitating the kuffar. You find Al-Imam al-Dahabi rahimahullah he has a risala called Tashbih al-Khasis bi ahli al-Khamis fi raddi tashabuh bil mushrikeen where Al-Imam al-Dahabi speaks about this concept of uh, imitating the disbelievers and he's talking about there was a celebration which they used to have and some of the Muslims fell for that celebration. So Imam al-Dahabi rahimahullah saw it uh, upon himself and took it on upon himself to have to write a book on it and alhamdulillah that book is matbu' mutadawal it's a book that's published and it's read and you'll find it also you find an imam ibn hajar al-asqalani rahimahullah who authored his book al-qawl al-thabt fi al-sawm yawm al-sabt but i think this book is mafqood it doesn't exist in the muslim world it's not published nor is it nor has it been seen uh, according to my knowledge uh, also, you find uh, where uh, Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, his book, Jilbab Al-Mar'at Al-Muslima, where he talks about the way that the Muslim woman should dress. If you look at the beginning, when Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din Al-Albani, rahimahullah, is talking about the conditions of the Jilbab, the conditions which it should fulfill, he talks about that it should not imitate the dressing of the women. And Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, talks about it there. Alayhi rahmatullah. Also, uh, Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah His noble book Which a lot of us have studied over and over again And a lot of us have probably heard of it Masail al-Jahiliyyah Muhammad Abdul Wahab authored that book Where he talks about Going against the disbelievers And the things that the disbelievers have uh, So uh, These are books that I've written And they're authored Rather there's a book Which is contemporary book right now It's 12 volumes It's called it's a 12 volume book. It's written by Najmuddin Al Izzi. Al Ghazi, sorry. Al Ghazi. Darun Nawadir authored his book. And it's 12 volumes. He said, he was, if you look at the Muqaddimah, the author mentions that he was writing for 16 years. So, this issue of Al Tashabbuh Bil Kuffar, a lot of the Muslims, when they hear it, they don't like it. And they think that it's something that, um, uh, that is light and it's very uh, simple. <coughs> Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to move on to the next part, which is anwa'ul mukhalafati al-kuffar. What are the things that we oppose the disbelievers in? The things that we oppose them in, the different types. The first one is, anything that is from their religion, ma kana min amri dinihim, something that is from their religion, but it's also from our religion. So we share this together. It's from their religion, it's a religious practice for them, but it's also a religious practice for us. Islam also tells us to oppose them as well in it. But we don't oppose them in the essence of this worship. We only oppose them in what? Fi hayati wa sifati. We oppose them in the form and the way we do it. For example, Sawm Yawm Ashura, the fasting of Yawm Ashura. They have the fasting of Yawm Ashura, the Jews and the Christians. And so do we. But what is it that we're different upon? Based on the hadith of Sahih Muslim, in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fasted the day of Yawm Ashura, and he commanded, وَأَمَرَ بِسِيَامِهِ And he commanded the people to fast. The people said, Ya Rasulullah, because the Sahabas were nurtured upon the path of opposing the disbelievers. And look what they did. When they were commanded to fast the day of Ashura, they said, Ya Rasulullah, إِنَّهُ يَوْمٌ this day, it's a day to عظمه اليهود والنصارى. The Christians and the Jews, they honor this day. It's a, it's, it's, it's a day for them. Like, do we still have to do it? Because they were taught before. And they were nurtured upon this concept of not imitating the kuffar. So they told the Prophet this, alayhi salatu wasalam. So the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he said, لَإِنْ عِشْتُ إِلَىٰ قَابِلٍ If I live the year to come, then I would fast. لَأَصُومَنَّ التَّاسِعَةِ I will fast on the ninth. So I would fast a day before it. So this shows us that they fasted on the 10th 
we oppose them by making sure that we fast a day before it or a day after it. So this is something that, so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, if I live, I will fast on the what? I will fast on the 10th, alayhi salatu wa salam. So that's the one that their religion is legislated in their religion and it's also legislated in our religion. We do it, but we oppose them in the form and the way we do it. The second one is something that's from their religion. Something that is that is from their religion. But in our religion, it's clearly been stated huh, that it's abrogated now. That, that ruling, it was only for them and it's not for us anymore. It's stated. For example, Eid Yom Sept. That Saturday is not a Eid for us. It was for them. It was a religious practice for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for them to celebrate the day of uh, Saturday as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a celebration. Where we're, where we're given what? Friday. Based on the ayah, وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنْ قَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِيهِمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ سَبْتِهِمْ شُرَّعًا وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْتَبِيْتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ كَذَلِكَ نَبْلُوهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Saturday was a day which they used to celebrate. But Ibn Umajah narrated, and Shaykh Al-Albani authenticated, in the hadith of Abbas, in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah said, in the said, the Prophet said, in the Yom Eidin, Jaala Hullahu lil Muslimin, Faman Jaa il al Jum'a, Falia Tassil. The Messenger said, This, on a Friday, he said, This is the day which Allah has made it a Eid for the believers. So anybody who comes to Friday, then he should. فليغتسل. He should shower and, and, and clean himself. وَإِنْ كَانَ طَيِّبٌ And if he is clean and he's good, then فَلْيَمِسْ مِنْهُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ Then place some perfume on yourself and also try to use miswak. Come in a very clean and uh, nice way. So this was something that used to be for them. They were, the, they were the ones who used to celebrate Saturdays. But for us, it's clearly stated that it's Friday now. So the believer now knows that we've opposed them in this. Their ruling for that, which was for them, is unique to them, not to us anymore. The third one is عَادَاتٌ وَعِبَادَاتٌ ibtadauha. Customs and also worships. Ibadat. But they're the ones who int they introduced it. It's not from their religion. Allah did not legislate it for them. As Allah said in the Quran, وَرُهْبَانِيَّةً ibtadauha. They're monks. They innovated some things into their religion and added things to their religion. And now even if we look at the concept of Christmas, it's something that they, they, uh, they say it's what? What do they say that Christmas is again? Pay a ritual. Huh? Pay a ritual, but what, what's the purpose behind it? This, this is the birth of Nabi Isa ibn Maryam, that's what they say, right? But the reality is that it's not. History does not prove that. So this is kumful and ibadat wa adat ibtada'uha, which they innovated. Are you with me? And even if it is, hypothetically, even if we accept the concept of that, it was a ibadah that Allah legislated for them and it was legislated for them, then again it will fall under which one? It will be abrogated for us. Something like this is not allowed for us. We don't celebrate. Now I want to talk about the third point, inshallah ta'ala, which is khasa'isu ahl al-kitab. There are things that are distinct for these people, the Ahlul Kitab. They were always known for. That the Muslims should know to go against them in. Some people, what they think is that imitating the Kufar is only about dressing, your eating, and etc., right? But there are a lot of things that if you look at the Muslim community today, you realize that they are actually imitating the disbelievers with. That are not what? That are acts or things that they don't even know that these are things that they are the ones that they got it from. For example, Khasa'is wa ahlil kitab, things that they are unique in and distinct for and they were always known for which is hasad, jealousy and envy. I'm referring to tamanni zawal al-ni'mah, wanting Allah to remove this blessing from this individual. Having jealousy that you want Allah to take this blessing from this person and take it away from them. This is something that is not known for a believer. Rather this is something the Quran states that it's a characteristics of theirs, the ahlul kitab. As Allah said in the Quran, وَدَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ A lot of the people of the scripture, they hope 
لو يردونكم من بعد ايمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند انفسهم they want you guys to leave your religions they want you to become disbelievers just like them and allah tells us why حسدا out of what jealousy out of jealousy they want you to leave your religion they want you to stay away from uh, or to get away from the path that will enter you to jannah Allah also says in the ayah, They wish and they hope if you guys are disbelievers like they are disbelievers, so you can all be the same. They don't want good for you. So this characteristics of hasad, jealousy and envy that you want Allah to remove a blessing from a person, it's not a characteristics of the believers, rather it's a characteristic of Ahlul Kitab. So you need to oppose them in it. And you need to stay away from that. The next one is Kitmanul Ilm, concealing knowledge and hiding knowledge is a characteristic that is known by the people of the books and the disbelievers. Allah says, وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ They conceal that which Allah wa Taala gave them and they hide it. So that is a characteristic which they are known for. A believer tells the truth and spreads the knowledge in which Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala and tells the people the haqq guides them to the straight path. Hiding the truth and concealing it is um, a characteristic of the people of the, uh, the scriptures. Also, ma'rifatul haq wa'adamu sayri ilayh. Knowing the truth and not treading on the path of the truth. You know it's the truth. You clearly know Allah said this. And then you choose not to take that path is not a characteristic of a believer. Rather, this is khasaisu ahl kitab. It's a distinct characteristic known by the people, the Christians and the Jews. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ If you say to them, آمنوا ما, آمنوا Believe بِمَا أَنزَلَ الله, That which Allah has sent down. قالوا, they will say to you, نُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَيَخْفُرُونَ بِمَا وَرَاهُ We'll only believe what has been sent to us. Huh? And then Allah goes, they disbelieve in everything after it. But what we know is, هِرَقْلَى when he asked the questions to Abu Sufyan, and he found out after asking all the questions, what did he say? This man that you have told me, Sayamliku Mawdi Akadamiya, this man will conquer and he will take over where I'm standing right now. But then look, he didn't take the truth. Knowing that, he still didn't take it. Abu Talib. The Prophet's uncle, what did he say? وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ بِأَنَّ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ مِنْ خَيْرِ أَدْيَانِ الْبَرِيَّةِ دِينَ لَوْ لَا الْمَلَامَةُ أَوْ حِدَارَ مُسَبَّةٍ لَوَجَدْتَنِي سَمْحًا بِذَاكَ مُبِينًا Because I know that the religion of Muhammad وسلم, is the best of religions. <coughs> if it wasn't the blame and the criticism of his colleagues and his friends, and his, huh? he said, you would have found me one who would take, <coughs> one who would accept Nabi Allah Muhammad is a religion. Distortion is another one. It's Ms. Khasai's Ahl Kitab, distorting the religion and playing and tampering with the deen of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Allah, Allah says in the Quran, Min al hadu yuharrifun al kalima an mawadi'i. The Jews. What do you see? They distort and they change the verses and the words of Allah. They change their own religion, they tampered with it to fit their own whims and desires. For example, the Qawluhu Ta'ala, when Allah says, لا تقولوا راعنا ولكن انظر ولا تقولوا راعنا Do not say راعنا Because they, they would use that and change it by saying راعينا which comes from the word رعونا So when you're speaking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't say راعنا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He tells us as well, فَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِينَ كَتُمُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا they write the Qur'an or their books with their own hands. They tamper with it by writing it. <coughs> and then look, you find Ahl Bid'ah, the people of innovation. They took the path of the Christians and the Jews. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ Allah spoke to. Allah who is the fa'il, is the one who spoke to Musa. But they want to distort that concept that Allah doesn't want to speak. They don't want to accept Allah speaks. So what did they change it into? Instead of making Allah the subject, they turn it into the object. So they say, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهَ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمَا And so they make Musa the subject and Allah the object. So Musa spoke to Allah. Or الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى They say, الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى Istawa is istawla. 
So they add an extra lamb to it. Istawa, they turn it into istawla. Just like the Jews, when Allah Taala said to them, when you go into the city of Bayt al Maqdis, say hitta. They said hinta. They, they added an extra noon in there. And that's why Allah says, فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ They changed what Allah told them. <coughs> they used a different wording, distorting the word of Allah. Allah told them, say, حِطَّ And they chose, they chose to change and tamper with it. So they said, حِنْطَ حِنْطَ Ibn Al-Qayyim said in his Al-Kafiyah uh, Al-Shafiyah في الانتصال للفرقة الناجية which is known as Al-Nuniya He says, نُونُ الْيَهُودِ نُونُ الْيَهُودِ The noon of the Jews. Jahmi and the lamb of Jahmi Safwan, the Jahmi concept, the Jahmis. Humafi Wahi Rabbil Arshi Zaidatani. They are two additional things that have been added to the uh, the Quran. Istawa istawla. Ulu hitta hinta. It's the same. Well, if you look at Ibrahim al laqani in his uh Jawharat al Tawheed. Look what he says. He says, وَكُلُّ نَصٍ أَوْ هَمَتَّ شَبِيهًا أَوْ وِلْهُ أَوْ فَوِّضْ وَرُمْ تَزِيهًا Any verse that comes to you, that you think that has, it has tashbih in it. You, you look at a verse and you think, oh, this verse has anthropomorphic concepts in it. أَوْ وِلْهُ Distorted. أَوْ فَوِّضْهُ Or say, I don't know what it means. وَرُمْ تَزِيهًا That's a way too. So he's telling you to distort it. Also, from the Qasais of Al-Kitab, from the unique characteristics that Al-Kitab have is Al-Ghulu, extremism. Extremism is known by them. They're the ones who are extreme. Like that's what Allah Tabarakul Ta'ala says, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, La Taghulu Fi Deenukum. Don't go extreme in your religion. It's sad today that you see some Muslims who fall into extremist concepts. Like for example, those who say we're celebrating the Prophet's birthday and they take the burda. And from the things they read from the Burha, bu, the Burda by Busiri is what? فَإِنَّ مِنْ جُودِكَ الدُّنْيَا وَبَرَّتَهَا وَمِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمُ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ From your generosity, O Muhammad, is this dunya. And from your knowledge is what? The knowledge of the ilm al-lawh al-mahfud. What's written in the al is from your knowledge. I mean, you have more knowledge, but that's part of it. When Allah Taala clearly is saying, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one knows the unseen in this earth and in heaven except Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Allah also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is saying وَيَقُولُونَ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّي فَقُلْ إِنَّمَا الْغَيْبُ لِلَّهِ فَانْتَظِرُوا إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُنْتَظِرِينَ Also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is saying قُلْ لَوْ كُنْتُ عَلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ from the characteristics that, I, that, that they are unique for. من خصائص أهل الكتاب is what? تقديس العلماء والتقديم طاعتهم. Placing the scholars on a high level. As giving them divinity in their speech. As though if the scholar says it is divine, that's it, خلاص. You just need to take it. And giving them precedence in obedience over the textual evidences. This is something that they did. اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دول الله. They took their monks and their rabbis. Arbab lords that they worshipped. And if you look at the hadith of Adi ibn Hatim which Tirmidhi narrated, is that did they make halal for you that which Allah made haram for you? And did they make haram for, for on you that which Allah made halal for you? And he said, Naam. And then the Prophet said, Fatilka ibadatum. There you are, you're worshipping them. So if the scholar is making halal and haram for you, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made halal and haram, then you know you're in a situation which is serious. Hubbud dunya, the love of this dunya, and loving it, is a characteristic what? Is something that they are known for. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that about one of them, that he, he wishes, and you ammara, that the, he would wish, the Jew man would wish to live alpha sanatin. A thousand years he would want to live this world. So in love of it. So hubbud dunya is an issue which is what? It's something that is, uh, is what they loved. Like the Prophet ﷺ told us, I don't fear poverty for you. 
But I fear for you that this dunya is open for you and that you indulge into the dunya like those before you indulged into it. And then the dunya destroys you. So they were the ones who, the people before us, they're the ones who love the dunya. So a believer, he stays away from these unique characteristics that the disbelievers have and he makes sure that he is uh, far from their path and that he treads on the path of the mu'minin. Anything which I had said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْهُ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ